Hi guys. So I'm going to try this a little bit different today, see how it works. I, I look forward to your feedback to see if you like it or don't like it, or if you would rather I make it, make the videos with my phone, because that's what I've been doing. This seems not as high resolution, so I'm a little concerned about that, but um, I'm going to try it, see how it goes. So I'm going to talk to you about volume. And I know Mrs. Ewell has already talked to you about perimeter and area, okay? And we use that all the time. And it's really important that in your mind, you get real clear about perimeter and area. So I have this, um, I have this container, right? And if I was gonna be talking about its perimeter, I'd be talking about the distance around the outside of that, correct? If I was talking about the area, I might be talking about the area at the bottom, meaning um, that two-dimensional shape, how much I can fit in there, or the side. Or if I'm talking about the surface area of the whole thing, I'm talking about the area of each face of the object, okay? Surface area. So I would use two dimensions. I would multiply them together, and that's how I'd find the area of each face the object and if I needed the surface area of the object meaning what is the surface area around the outside or what how much material it might take to wrap that that object or make that object out of some sort of material like paper or cardboard I would need the surface area so today I'm going to talk to you about volume and so if we're talking about volume we're talking about a three-dimensional piece of our object so I'm not just talking about the perimeter around the outside, I'm not just talking about the surface area or how much paper it might take to cover my object. I'm talking about how much my object can hold. But when you think about it, I'm talking about how many beans can my object hold, okay? That's volume. So I can measure my beans per bean. I can measure my beans per ounces or pounds or grams, but I'm talking about three dimensions that make up that amount. I'm multiplying my, my length times my width times my height, and that's gonna give me my volume inside of my object, okay? That's fundamentally what volume is. So what I wanna do now you think about that, right? This object is rather simple to find the volume of because I can multiply my length times my width times my height. And if I take my ruler and let me find my inches, even though my ruler isn't incredibly accurate, I'm still gonna do it that way. So I have, let's say I have three inches for my length and I have two inches for my width Three times two, that's six. And I have three inches for my height. So my total volume is 18 cubic inches. So my unit, because I measured it in inches, is inches. And so if I weighed these beans, and it came out to 0 0.25 pounds, then I have 0.25 pounds of beans per 18 cubic inches. So I can figure out my beans per cubic inch with that information, okay? So it's very handy to have, it's very handy to know, and it's very important in many, many things we do in the real world to be able to figure out your volume, okay? So I'm gonna share my screen here, and I wanna talk about, um, so uh, Mrs. Yule talked about our reference sheet in um, in her previous video and indeed we do give you volume on the reference sheet and so if you'll look here in this area where there's surface area and volume we have the volume of a rectangle we have the volume of um, of uh, different shapes a sphere and a pyramid and a cylinder and all these different shapes okay one thing I want you to notice about each one of these is that there's a capital B involved, okay? So even the area of the rectangle right here, 
even the area of the rectangle. It shows it in length times width times height, but it also shows you that it's the large B times height. So the large B is the area of the base of the object, okay? So length times width is the area of a base of this shape, right? This prism, this rectangular prism. And we can rewrite that as a capital B times the height. So when you come over here to this, um, this prism, triangular prism, um, they write it as a base times the height. Well, the base is the shaded region that's a triangle. So we have to use the area of a triangle, which is one half base times height. That's equal to our big B. This is a really important concept that that's, look, that's talking about the area of the base. It's a big B. So you have to think about what the base is and, and find the area of the base and multiply it times your height, okay? Same thing here with this triangular pyramid, okay? Or um, it's actually got a square base pyramid. And this cylinder, the area of your base is a circle. So you have to know how to find the area of a circle, okay? That's on here, it's right here, it's all here for you. You wanna keep this handy during this section. All right, so I pointed that out to you. Um, the only one that doesn't have the area of the base is the sphere. The sphere is 4 thirds pi, which is just a number, times the radius cubed, okay? Again, all of these volumes are going to be units cubed. So if it's just units, meaning squares on a grid, it will be units cubed. If it's inches, it will be inches cubed. If it's feet, it will be feet cubed. If you're dealing in inches and feet, you will have to convert them to the same measurements so that you can do whatever that unit is cubed, okay? So that's volume in a nutshell. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples. Let's look at this example number one. So here we have a volume of a pyramid, okay? This pyramid, is, um, and it looks to me like it's a triangle. It looks to me like it's a triangle. Here's a right angle on this side right here on the base, the capital B. So for this area here, we would have to do the area of a triangle, which would be one half base times height. And then we would multiply it times the height of the pyramid, which is nine meters. So let's take a look at what they do. First, they find the formula, right? It's one third base times height. Okay, that's on your sheet. One third base times height. Now again, it's the big B. That means it's the area of the base, okay? So we take one third times the big B. Well, the big B is one half base times height. So we have the one half right here. The base of our triangle is four meters, right? And the height of our triangle is six meters. So we have one half base of four times height of six. So that's our big B right there. That's our big B, okay? And we multiply that times the height of our pyramid, okay? The height of our pyramid right there, okay? And once we do that, we come out with 36 when we simplify, okay? Let's take a look at this next one. So we're gonna find the volume of the pyramid. Again, we want to think about the shape of the space because we need to find the area of the space. So hopefully you notice these congruency lines going around the outside. That tells you that each of these segments or sides are congruent to the other. It also tells you right here that this is a right angle. So we know from geometry that this is a square because one corner has a right angle, all of them have a right angle, and they are congruent, so they're all the same length, and that makes it a square. So we know this one side is four meters, and so we know this side is also four meters. So we would multiply those two together, four times four, that's 16 meters squared, because area is in square units, right? Our units are meters, so 16 meters squared and we multiply that times our height of 2.4. So here we go. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. Oh. 
I don't really want to hide them. Well, it's not showing us. So it's the big base, the big B, which is our 16 meters squared times our 2.4 meters, which gets us 12.8 cubic meters. Okay. Take a look at another one. All right. So we have a triangular pyramid. It asks us to find the height of this triangular pyramid. They give us the volume. We know that volume equals the area of the base, the big B, times the height, right? So what we would do is write down what we know. We would write down volume equals big B times H. Actually, it's not quite that simple. It's, um, <laughs> it's gonna be one third big B times H. And then we plug in the values we have and solve for the one we don't. So first we write down the formula of our volume. Then we put in the, interesting, they did not show us. Hmm. That's a bummer. So, they put in the, the formula is volume equals one third base times height. And we then put in our, what we know the volume is is 14 feet cubed. So we put that in and we put in our value for um, the area of the base, which we know is one half base times height. So one half times four, times three is the area of our base, and they just substitute in six for that, because that's what that is, times the height, and then we solve for the height, and the height is seven feet, okay? Take a look at the next one. Hopefully I won't confuse you as much with it. Find the height of the triangular pyramid. Again, they give us the volume, and we know that we have to have the area of the base, which is one half, the base of that, which is 24, times the height of that, which is eight. That's gonna give us the area of the base of that pyramid. We know that the volume equals that big B, one third that big B times our height, okay? So we get 12 meters when that's completed. All right, let's take a look. Do we have another interesting one here? So, hang on. Let me find one more, because I don't really want to do that one. I wanted to do a more complex one. Here's a composite solid. This is a good one for us to look at. So we're talking about the volume, meaning how much can fit inside of here. And our units are meters. And um, these side lengths are all the same. The, the length and the width and the height are all the same. That's actually a cube that has a, that's six meters, right? So to find the volume of this piece, we would multiply the length times the width times the height. Six times six times six, right? And we would find that. And then this, we would have to use our pyramid formula for that. One third, our base times our height. So our base on this pyramid is a square, six by six, right? Because it has the same base as this bottom. So that'd be 36, that's our big B. And then our height is six. So for our formula for this portion, we would have one third our base, which is 36 times our height, which is six. And we would find, and then we would add those two together, the two volumes of our composite shape to find our complete volume. So here's how they work it out for us. The volume of the solid is the volume of the cube, which is down here, plus, the volume of the pyramid, which is what we just talked about. So it's S cubed, or the side lengths of the cube, times each other. So six times six times six. It's the same as S cubed. So six times six times six. Um, 36 times six. It's gonna be 216. For the volume for the volume or the area of the the volume of the cube okay and then one half 
one third the base times the height. Okay, so here's what we end up with when that happens. Because our base is a square, we have six times six. So one third, six times six, times the height of our pyramid right there. Okay? All right. So hopefully that helps you in working out these volume problems. Remember that the volume of the sphere is four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. And any time they're asking you to solve for a missing dimension, they give you volume and they're asking to solve for a missing dimension, you just simply plug in your numbers and solve the missing one. All right, I hope this is helpful. Uh, let me know what you think. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys this week. I hope you come. So come visit me during class time and if you need extra help. Okay. Thank you.